Hello and welcome. My name is Miss Vegeta. I'm currently a teacher at Prale Secondary School. I teach both history and geography from S1 to S5. Okay. Um, today's lesson will be based on weathering. Okay. It's a topic for S3, Term 2. Now, for today's lesson, we have three main objectives. First of all, we're going to know what is weathering. That is, I'm going to identify or define okay, the term weathering. Secondly, know the main types of weathering, okay, as there are more than one type of weathering. And then lastly, explain the processes of the different types of weathering and their resultant landfall. Okay, so for today's lesson, first of all, define the term weathering, know the main type of weathering, their processes, and then the landforms, which are formed as a result of the processes. Alright? Okay, so what is weathering? Now, most of the time when we teach the topic weathering, students can get confused uh, between weather and weathering. Okay? So, just to be clear, weather is the state of the atmosphere for a short period of time. Whereas weathering, we are talking about rocks. Okay? The previous topics you've done was rocks and mineral, so you already know what, what is rocks. Okay? So, weathering focuses on the disintegration, or in other words, the breaking down or the crumbling away of rocks. Now, why do I have breaking down and crumbling away in bracket? Okay? As you have learned, okay, rock, some of them they are soft, so they are easy, it's easier for them to break down. As compared to others, they are a bit more resistant, okay? so they take time for them to break down. Now, it is also the decomposition of rock in situ. Now, what does in situ mean? As you are aware, rock, it's the non-living things, which means that rock cannot move. So for rocks to weather, the rock remains in its permanent location or site. Okay? It's just the agent of weathering that acts upon the rock. All right? So how does the rock weather? The rock weather as a result of rain action, extreme temperatures, and biological activity. Okay, so I go over it once again. Weathering is the disintegration, the decomposition of rock in situ as a result of rain action, extreme temperatures, and biological activities. Okay, so this is the definition of weathering. Now, what are the main types of weathering? Okay, so we have three main types of weathering. We have physical weathering, biological weathering, and chemical weathering. So how many types of weathering do we have? Three main types of weathering. Physical weathering, biological weathering, and chemical weathering. Now, for each of the main types of weathering, I'm going to explain the different processes and the resultant landform, which means the features which are formed as a result of these processes. So to start off with, we'll start with physical weathering. Alright, so physical weathering is also known as mechanical weathering. As you know, we said that weathering is the breaking down of rocks. Now in the case of physical weathering, this type of weathering occurs okay, um, without changing the chemical composition of the rock. Now, remember in S2, when you learn about rocks and minerals, Okay, you, um, the teacher must have told you that rocks is formed as a result of the combination of different minerals such as mica, feldspar, and quartz. Okay, and quartz. Now, this this is this make up the chemical composition of the rock. But when we talk about physical weathering, it does not affect the chemical composition of the rock. It only of affects the physical structure of the rock, which means that the rock breaks up in different um, pieces but it does not touch the chemical composition of the rock. So, an example, if let's say granite is being aware that physically granite will remain granite and will not change into something else. Now, why does physical weathering occur? It occurs in mostly areas whereby the rocks are bare, devoid of vegetation cover, and um, exposed to extreme temperatures, which means that the rock 
they are exposed directly to extreme temperature. When I say extreme temperature, it can be very hot areas or in areas which are very cold. Okay? So, now let's look at the different processes under physical weathering. Now, under physical weathering, there are four main processes. There is granular disintegration, block disintegration, exfoliation, and freeze stop. But for today's lesson, we are going to focus on the two main processes, which are exfoliation and free stop process. Okay? So now, exfoliation. Another word for exfoliation is onion skin weathering. I'm sure most of you right now at the top of your head, you are trying to identify why the term onion skin weathering. Okay? Now, where does it occur? Like I've said before, weathering um, occurs as a result of extreme temperature. Now, this is one way by which temperatures plays in. Okay? So, it occurs in very hot climate, okay, where they are exposed non-vegetated rock. What do I mean by this? It means that the rock does not have any cover of vegetation. The rock are exposed to direct sunlight. And these are mostly in areas whereby we say in semi-arid or arid regions or in the hot desert or the tropical deserts. Okay? So what happens to the rock? Now, as you know, in the tropical desert, we have little or no evaporation at all. Okay, what does that mean? It means that because there is no evaporation, we won't have the process of condensation forming clouds. As a result of that, during the day, we get direct exposure of sunlight. Okay, and since we don't have any cover of vegetation, okay, the rock they get the direct heat from the sun. So what happened? What happened is that the outer layer of the rock, they are heated up during the day. And they heat up faster as compared to the inside part of the rock. Okay? So, when something heats up, okay? Now, what happens? Eventually, because it, hits, it is heating up, it will expand. Now, the outer layer of the rock will start to expand during the day. So, we are talking about 40 degrees Celsius, which means it's very hot. Okay? So during the day, the outer layer of the rock will expand. Now, what will happen during the night? Will the rock keep on expanding? No. Why? Because in the desert at night, it's the reverse. Like I've said before, we don't have evaporation, so there is no condensation, no forming of clouds. Now, the, because there is no cloud, it makes it easier for the heat to escape into the atmosphere, making the temperature cooler. Okay? So the, the clouds usually they act as a, a, like a blanketing effect, preventing the heat from escaping. But in the desert, since we don't have this, the heat escapes rapidly. So which means that there won't be any expansion during the day, the rock will now contract. Okay? The rock will now return to its normal size. Okay? Now, this process is continuous, which means it keeps on repeating. The next day, the same thing will happen to the rock. The rock will expand once again. The outer layer of the rock will expand once again. At night, the rock will contract once again. Now, what do you think will happen? Because this process is continuous, this will cause stress on the out, um, outer layer of the rock. Okay? It's not only human that is stressed up, it's the rock as well. So the rock is will cause stress on the outer layer of the rock, causing it to weaken. Eventually, the rock will break into smaller pieces. Okay? So we go over it once again. Expansion of the outer layer of the rock during the day. Okay? Contraction of the rock at night because of cooler temperature. Continuous contraction and expansion of the rock. Causes stress on the outer layer of the rock. As a result, the outer layer of the rock gets spilled off or break into smaller pieces. Eventually, what will happen? It will form a feature like this. You see here where the rock has been peeled off. And this feature is known as exfoliation dew. 
Okay, it shows you whereby the layers of the rock has been peeled off as a continuous uh, um, expansion and contraction of the rock due to extreme temperatures in areas where we don't have vegetation cover at all. Okay, so this process is known as exfoliation or onion skin weathering. Now, by now, I'm pretty sure why, um, you know why we have used the term onion skin because uh, when we look at an onion, it has different layers and the layers keep peeling off. Okay? So this is one process of physical weathering. Now, the second process we are going to look at today is freeze store or frost, frost shattering. Okay? Same extreme temperatures, but this time it's not hot, it's cold. Okay? Now, again, it occurs in areas whereby the rocks are cracked and the temperatures fluctuate around freezing point. Now, what do we mean by fluctuate? It means it goes a little bit up at around 10 degrees or so and then goes back to freezing point. You know, freezing point is zero degrees. Now, how does this happen? Okay? So, in areas whereby, in temperate regions, that is, whereby the rock contains cracks, during the day, when it's about 10 degrees, the water gets collected into the rock. Okay, so it's liquid. Now, at night, something else happens. At night, the water freezes because the temperature has dropped to zero degrees or below. Okay, so when the temperature drops, the water is now frozen. Uh, and of course, the volume which was, which was being occupied before by the water, okay, cannot be the same because now liquid has been turned into solid, so therefore it needs more space, okay? Now, as a result of that, the frozen ice, okay, the expand, okay, or the exert pressure on the, on the rocks causing the cracks to widen. Eventually, what will happen, because this process is continuous, it will cause the rock to split and break into smaller pieces. Alright? So this is the second process. Now, this happens at the top of the mountain. 